Here's the pitch. Swing and a fly ball to right field. Pretty well hit. Freelick back at the wall. He jumps. It's gone. He did it. He did it. Pete Alonso with the most memorable home run of his career. It's leverage. Your most trusted arms. The 2 1. Lindor towards right center field. This one is back. It is gone. Grand slam. And Lindor puts the Mets on top. The biggest swing of the season for New York. You are now listening to the Shane Sons Podcast with your host, Keith and Keyshawn Diaz. Baby bro, what's up, homie? What up, what up? Talking about one of my one of my favorite players to watch hit a baseball because he hits it far. Yeah, he's very, very fun to watch. I'm a fan. You're a fan. Everyone's a fan. We're a fan of a fan. Shout out to Teixeira Hernandez, the topic of today's video. But before we get into it, don't forget to like, subscribe, retweet. Give us that love. We're shooting for 500 subscribers. We're almost there, ladies and gentlemen. I would love to get there before the season starts. So show some love. To me, my baby bro, and everyone who supports the chance on the podcast. But with that being said, to Oscar Hernandez, another guy we made a video about last year. We're making yeah. again. Yep. If it feels like deja vu. Like deja vu. <laughs> yeah. So um, I, you're I, a fan. You're a huge, you're a bigger fan than I am, but I am a yeah. fan. Just tell me why you like this guy. I like him because like it's just a consistent bat. I think that he got nerfed in Seattle. And yeah, most guys, do, by the way. yeah, most guys get nerfed in Seattle because of that big ass ballpark. And then when he went to LA, he became one of surprisingly, obviously, they have Mookie and Freddie and Shohei, but he was the most important hitter because he was the most consistent and he was driving in runs, other than Shohei, obviously. He was right. driving in runs, hitting for power. He was raking in the postseason. I know that we kind of shut him down a bit, but then he woke back up mm-hmm. and he took it on to the other series after. And um, yeah, man, I, I love watching Teoscar because I feel like I get a lot of Nelson Cruz vibes Ooh, from him. I like I like that. I agree yeah. with you on that. That's yeah, a great get, comp, by the way. I get a lot of Nelson Cruz vibes from him. He jumped around through teams, but he's always been consistent, like Edwin Encarnacion, like one of those dudes. And um, I'm, I, j- I just wish that we would have signed him last off season <laughs> because no, it was like nobody wanted him. He just stood yeah. on the market yeah. for mad long, and then the Dodgers came in the in the twelfth in the eleventh hour, and they was like, you know what? Let's take let, let's see what happens. Let's let's take a fly on him, and he became an all star, one of the best hitters in the National League, the whole league in general, really. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, man, I, I I love to see when players have that bounce back and and get their confidence back. Because in Toronto, he was he was a really good hitter for them, and sure it, it, it it almost felt like unfair the way the league treated him when he after he went and left and left Seattle. I know that his strikeout rate was insane, but mm-hmm. also look at the ballpark he was in. Look at the protection that he had; wasn't really much there. He is to me the definition as in terms of a, a he is the perfect right-handed bat for a lineup. I think because you can drop him anywhere and he's gonna produce. I think Seattle for what he gave Seattle in a very weak lineup and a very poor ballpark to hit in. He I think he did pretty decent. And I think it scared some people off that it wasn't the the numbers it should have been because I think everyone expects bigger numbers, but he goes to the Dodgers with a bunch of MVPs, and he was that quiet guy batting behind all of them. And what did he do? He just outdid himself. I got some cool numbers about Tasker. When you when he pulls a ball, I'm just talking about last season. When he pulled the ball, the OPS was 1,200. When he hit it dead center, the OPS was a flat 1,000. When he went opposite field, the OPS was 1,100. Oof. That's not, I mean, and then I'll give you this. His first half OPS was 802. His second half OPS was 902. I mean, the guy's good. And I think the guy, so someone asked me the other day, they were, we were talking about Willie Adamas, who we'll probably make a video for eventually, but Willie Adamas, someone said, 
it's uh oh he, he's the second best hitter on the market i was like well i would probably put him third and they were like well we'll be second for you i was like to oscar hernandez to oscar hernandez i mean you're getting hitting for extra base hits you're getting hitting for power you're getting clutch hitting i think even his high leverage numbers are pretty solid like his wrc plus and high leverage spots is 118 his his, his ops and high leverage situations is 771 that's very good. I mean, to Oscar, I, I, I love what you said. Nelson Cruz, Edwin Encarnacion kind of mold. fits like right in between. Goes to a bunch of organizations and stands out. Wins an wins a all-star nod. He, he's just good. And I think I would prefer him over, say, like in terms of the outfit. We all know we're after Soto. And I think the the media and the national like assumption is the second best guy is Santander. I would go to Oscar right after Soto. I really would. And I think you know what you're getting more with to Oscar than Santander. I really feel that way. That's a good that's a good conversation because I didn't think about like obviously, you know, you, you look at who the names are or whatever and you know, you, you decipher which hitter might be best and ranking them. But like, I'm thinking about it now in terms of a guy that I know, I just know what I'm going to get out of him. And um, he's proven it. Obviously, Santander has this past season was almost an anomaly as opposed to his years past because he, right. he hit 40 home runs, had almost a, 120 RBIs and so on and so forth. Um, Teoscar, though, he's as consistent as it comes. His soul fields um, has a strong played on defense. played on both coasts. Played on both so coasts. He he. Yeah. It's like you really can't find. He strikes out a lot, but who doesn't? Like at this point, yeah, that's, that's baseball. That's baseball. Yeah, now. Like Juan so, Soto is gonna get six hundred million dollars because he doesn't strike out. There ain't many Juan Sotos out. There. Like like mm -hmm. two of them in the world. So like the guy's gonna strike out. Brandon Nimmo, Lindor, Pete, they all strike. They all strike out. Viento strikes out a lot. Yeah. Teoscar Hernandez, I mean, I get it. You don't want to add strikeouts, but you're also adding 30 home run potential, 90 RBS. I mean, it, it like automatic. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what park. It doesn't matter what, I don't know. It just doesn't matter. The guy's just copy and paste to me. Also, for him, like, why would you want to leave that lineup? Why would you, why in the world would you want to leave that? lineup that specific lineup like you have, he has that you have perfect, perfect role. role he yeah. has the perfect role yeah you have life is per it will never get better than what it is now so if i was him i would be like you know what i'll if i need to take a team friendly deal i will maybe for short oh, yeah. term you know so that i can stat pad and get that oh, real yeah. real nice money you know oh, down yeah. the line I hope he stays there. And I say that as a guy who wants him on the Mets because if he stays there for a few more years, I mean, he will he will be remembered in a better light. He for a while he was just a guy that most Latinos like us like really knew he was good, but now he's on a bigger stage performing in the postseason, doing that, and he does it for a constant amount of years. You know, the way certain players get talked about because of their postseason prowess. They will talk about him moving forward because look, Shohei was hurt, Freddie was hurt too, yeah. Mookie and Teoscar were the constant throughout the whole thing, and Mookie shedded his playoff nightmares, and Teoscar just showed everybody it doesn't matter if it's the postseason, regular season, West Coast, East Coast, line up here, line up there, Teoscar just gonna have to be pretty good, and I, I, I mean, I, I don't think he, I, I agree with you, I don't think the Dodgers let him out of their sight, I really don't. I think he's going to take a very good – I think he does another deal and it's, like, backloaded, and he's guaranteed his money, honestly. I really do. Yeah, it just it, – it doesn't make sense for him. He he can still get paid there because it's not like they ain't got no money, you know, so – He deserves a payday. You know, and it's funny. His agent is actually very vocal on social media. His agent said going into last season they were looking for a three- to four-year deal. And the market, like you said, it just – nobody wanted him. He then had a conversation with Tail. Tail's just like, you know what? Get me to the best team that could win. Of course, goes to the Dodgers. So I'm assuming now we're going to be like, okay, I did the one year. I sacrificed my needs, my wants. 
Now he probably is going to be like, I want the three to four year deal. He deserves it. Yeah, he deserves it. And also, to, to your point, like, think about it. it it's the, the market itself for hitting is scarce yeah. after, yeah. after him, yeah. Santander, and Soto. Like, then you get into Willie Adamas, Pete Alonso, get into real question marks after that. And I don't think that the Dodgers, obviously, they're, they're going to, you know, be, you know, looking into Soto and all these big names. But for them, it just, it just makes so much sense to oh, yeah. just keep him, have him in that lineup, continue to go eight, well, seven man deep in that lineup. Cause that's where baseball is headed. You got to have like seven guys now. Yep. Yep. Go yep. Against, you know, high level pitching. It just makes more, it just, it makes too much sense for both sides. Yep. Yep. I fully expect that's probably going to happen. I know the Orioles, the Red Sox, and I believe there's another team that's interested, but I think they're going to be one of those situations where he's going to bring back all those offers. Dodgers will match. Days red and early. Personally, who am I take on it? But ladies and gentlemen, that is another one in the books. A great week of breaking down free agents. Uh, hopefully in a few days we get real, real, real news. And, you know, maybe we can just, you know, probably call an audible and actually start talking about what's actually happening in free agency rather than telling you pretty much we already know. But other than yeah. that, baby bro, that's another one in the books. We are out.